Hey, good evening, everybody. It's good to be with you tonight. I pray that it's a good week already for you. I pray that God's blessings are all about you and that you're flowing in uh, the Spirit of God and God is using you in a mighty way. It is good to come to you uh, tonight here in our Wednesday night Bible study. And I pray that, again, uh, this uh, Bible study will be a blessing to you, a challenge to you. It's probably a very familiar passage of scripture that most of us are maybe even have memorized throughout the years. But I want to just kind of break it down in five points tonight, uh, five basic points that I'm, I'm seeing here tonight that I think we need to be reminded of. Um, we're living in a time where uh, there's a lot of uh, personal turmoil that People be, seem to be facing financial difficulties, physical difficulties, uh, attacks from the enemy, uh, as well as just um, unfortunate decisions we might have made that have created some craziness within our life. And so in turn, we find ourselves maybe in the midst of some kind of storm or battle. And so I just want to encourage you through that. There's a place uh, in Christ that I believe victory will reside at all times. And so tonight, let's look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it's a call to you and I to commit ourselves to something. And if we do, the Bible says, if you're submitted to God, you can resist the enemy of your soul and he must flee. And that could be a multitude of things. That could be if the, if the enemy is bringing a storm to your life, then you have the power of attorney in the midst of that storm to deal with it uh, in the name of Jesus. And so uh, because you're submitted to God, he must respond to the recorded word of God as well as uh, the God in you, Christ in you, uh, the hope of glory, the spirit of God. So let's go to Lord in prayer tonight. Um, again, continue praying for one another, our church body has several needs. Most of you are aware of who is in need. Um, if you're in need and we don't know, please call us. We'd love to have opportunity to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the night. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless my thoughts to be your thoughts. Let me bring clarity to the word of God that it might help those that are listening. For those that are new in the Lord, I pray, Lord, that this might be a real uh, challenge a shot in the arm to them, Lord, that will help them overcome, be what they need to be in you, in your name. Amen. Romans 12, 1 and 2, a very powerful passage of scripture taken from a very powerful book. Paul writing to the Roman church, he says, So dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Now, uh, again, we know that the body represents a dwelling place. It is the, the, you know, it's a clay earthen vessel. It is a tent. Paul refers to it at times as it is a place where Donald Saglin, this body right now that I'm touching, uh, is, is a temple of God. It is where God decided to reside with me. And during this life that I live here on earth, I can live it in Christ and Christ in me. And so that's what he's referring to, your body uh, to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. There's some, there's some emphasis put on here about your body. It needs to be, uh, we, God doesn't need dead bodies. God doesn't need people that are dead in trespasses and sin. God needs some living sacrifices, people that will commit to doing the word of God, living the word of God, being literally the word of God in this world, okay? The kind he will accept. What kind will he accept? Something that's living in holy, okay? Holy without holiness, no man will see the Father. When you think of what he has done for you, this is too, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let your let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect God's will is for you. 
again, uh, you know, the old King James Version, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the least, or your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to emphasize uh, five basic points here. One, we have a responsibility to give ourselves over to God. Uh, to give ourselves over to God is just not a confession of sin. If I'm, you know, the Bible says, confess your sins one to the other, pray the prayer of faith, and God will not only save you, but he'll heal you, okay? He also talks about confession of sin. It brings forth salvation to the man or woman of, uh, that would confess and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess of your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. For all have sinned, you know. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We need a Savior. Every man needs a Savior, whether he believes it or not. He needs a Savior. And so tonight when we look at this, um, it's not enough just to confess your sins to God. But you must become that living sacrifice. We must go out and live it out. We must become somebody that God can use for his glory. So that first thought that we want to emphasize is your body, that temple of God, given over to him to be used for his glory, for his purpose. His will be done, not yours, okay? And, and so we cannot just confess our sins. We must act upon the word of God as that new creation, old things have passed away and now all is new, okay? And so the emphasis here is a surrendering of, the surrendering of my will, surrendering of body. The, the Bible talks about a man being made of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. The spirit is that eternal part. The soul is the place where all the battle goes on and the body is that temporal part that needs to be transformed into that, uh, you know, the Bible says the, corrupt, the corruption will take on incorruption, the mortal will take on immortality, um, meaning simply this temporary body must take on change someday. But until it does, we must submit ourselves, our actions, our wills to him, okay? So that first thought, and he said, it, it's going to be a sacrifice. It, it's going to be, it's going to cost you. You know, I mean, bottom line is, uh, it's going to cost you time and talent and efforts. It's going to cost you finances. It's going to cost everything about you. Um, you've been bought with a price. You're not your own. In other words, God has a right now to ask you to spend your life as he wills and not as you will. And it's fair. <clears throat> it's, if you think of all of what God has done for you and what he's done for mankind, then it's not hard to be willing to sacrifice. Now, there'll be days. <clears throat> there'll be days that will be easier than others. There'll be moments in time. There'll be things that you serve in and things that you do for the glory of God that are going to be easier than others. Some will be just a simple sacrifice, but some might be a, a, a strong, deep, uh, very costly sacrifice, okay? Uh, to what limit God will ask, God will never give you more than you can bear, okay? So God will never empower or never give you something that he's not already by faith empowered you to do, okay? And that that goes for me, you, for everybody, whether you're a, a preacher of the gospel or whether you're just a base, basic laity in the church, Bottom line is we all have the responsibility to become that living sacrifice, okay? So I'm surrendered. I surrender my body, my soul, and my spirit to him. I'm all yours, God, okay? And, and I do it as an action unto him. I can't just, again, verbally say it, but I must act upon it. I must be that one. I must be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. I must do the word and will of God, okay? Don't copy the world. <clears throat> um, he, he says very clearly, he says, I'm transforming you from the likeness of what this world looks like. You know, uh, this is uh, 
this is something that troubles me often. Um, I see Christians respond in, in fear and faithlessness as much as non-Christians, non-believers. Not only do I see that, but I see them acting out things in life. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things I can use in illustration, but, um, uh, you know, if we look and sound like the world, guys, then what makes us any different? What makes us stand out? What makes us, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about uh, sweet water and bitter water can't flow out of the same well. Uh, good fruit and bad fruit can't be produced off the same tree. Um, if it is, okay, if bad fruit is because something has spoiled it, okay? But the bottom line is you and I have been created to bear much fruit, fruit that should remain. In other words, good fruit. We've been called to uh, um, utilize and, and, and literally be that word extended in this world, okay? And so we cannot copy, we cannot look, and, and I, I want to be careful here because we just preached a message not long ago about reclining with the sinners and how it's our responsibility to live amongst and live with and be uh, a part of this world but we don't have to partake of the things of this world, okay? Fear, doubt, worry, all these things that the world is caught up in, and then not only that, but the uh, the obvious things that are contrary to God's word. Uh, the Bible says, be not drunk with wine in excess, but be filled with the spirit. What he's referring to is we shouldn't have to turn to drugs and alcohol. We shouldn't have to turn to illicit sex. We shouldn't have to turn to living like the world does to minister to them. We can minister to them in the midst. We can recline around their table, but it's not to partake of their sinful ways. It's to uh, rise up above and help them come out to where you are, come to be where you are in Christ and live that overcoming, <clears throat> that uh, pleasant life, you know. Now, let me say this to you. <clears throat> Christianity sometimes is hard. And being a true Christian sometimes can be very taxing in the aspect that you will have people of this world uh, hate you at times. Uh, they'll, they'll ridicule you. They'll make fun. They'll single you out. They'll make you a target for all the destructive thinking that they can put forth and efforts they can put forth to, you know, a coworker might, uh, because you're a Christian, might have it out for you. I mean, the list of things go on and on. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that Christianity is just all peaches and cream. Uh, in fact, majority of the time, if you look through the Word of God, the true Christians were being persecuted on a consistent basis. But there was that overcoming power in them that even if they lost their life for God's word, it was gained to them because Paul clearly shows us that to lose his life and to spend his life for Christ is nothing but gain. And, and, and the fact that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And you can't think as a born again Christian, you can't think of someplace better than that. Okay. And so, you know, but I don't want to, in the same turn, I don't want to rush my way out of here either. I, I want to utilize my life as a living sacrifice. Whatever the sacrifice, give me the power, God. Give me the strength, God, to endure and push through and find the victories we need as well as not just for me, but for those that I come in contact with, okay? Um, you know, we, we have a responsibility to one another, to lift one another, build one up in the faith, and challenge one another, encourage one another, and be there when somebody is down and out, when somebody's hurting, when somebody's in need, and do your best to allow God to utilize, be utilized to meet the need within their life, okay? Um, so don't copy the behaviors of the world. We shouldn't look and sound like the world, guys. We should come out from among it and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. 
He didn't say touch not the individual, but he said touch not the sin of the world, okay? Touch not the sinful things of the world, okay? Uh, and he even goes as far as anything that looks sinful, stay away from it, okay? Anything that looks anti-God, anything that looks contrary to God, stay away from it. Now, again, I'm not asking you to stay away from the sinful people. I'm asking you not to partake of their sins, okay, with them in sin. So anyways, hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory, but if it's not, call me. If I'm leaving you hanging and got you in a question or quandary, please call me. Let me know. Transform. How am I going to be transformed by the change of the way I think? My mind. I know if you're like me, the biggest battlefield is within my mind. I can be defeated or I can be an overcomer just by the way I think. Um, uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, uh, a wonderful uh, scientist, doctor, uh, as born again believer, has written a book, Turn On Your Brain. Uh, and it's, a, it's all about the power of thought. And it's all about the power that literally lies within the ability to transform your thinking. And she literally has proven through science, okay, medical science, that she was able to prove that through the power of thinking, she can literally alter the DNA of somebody's body, okay? And so the power of the natural mind in itself is very is very powerful. It's 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 a, it's a very powerful organ that can literally make changes within the physical structure of the DNA of an individual. Okay, um, so there's a lot of power there. Now you couple that with the anointing of God's spirit, and here's the anointing of God's spirit. When the woman that had the issue of blood, she went for years looking for help through doctors and spent a lot of money doing it, spent a lot of time doing it. Finally, she just comes to her senses and say, you know what, if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just touch his garment, I don't necessarily even have to have a conversation with him. If I can just get to, get to that place where I can touch his garment, I believe I'll be made whole. And what's the Bible says? She was made whole. The virtue flowed. The anointing flowed through him to her. Okay, and it transformed her circumstance. This is <clears throat> what I'm referring to. In the thinking of our mind, if our minds think the thoughts that God thinks, just meditate on it with me. God's asked me to think his thoughts. <clears throat> Let this mind be stayed in you. Please, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm about to yawn here. Forgive me. <clears throat> But um, let this mind be stayed in you. The way we think should be the way the Word of God has directed us to think. The things we speak should be spoken by the way the Word of God has directed us to speak. Okay? The way we act is based upon how the Word of God has shown us we should act. And if we would do that by, and, and so how does this come to me? By the way we change, we change our thinking. We change the way we perceive things. We now see it from the eyes and perspective that our Lord and Savior has spoken it. And you say, well, pastor, I have a hard time. Let me tell you something. If you ask the Holy Spirit of the living God to reveal to you the truth of his word, he will guide you into all truth. He promised that. God is not a liar. He's a God of his word. What he promises, he will do, okay? And we need to stop allowing our minds to give birth to our, our circumstances based on our experiences. Again, our experiences will deceive you and lie, but the word of God will not deceive you, nor will it lie to you. Stay right there. Renew your mind to that. Think those thoughts. Act upon those thoughts. Speak upon those thoughts. Literally be, literally, everything about you be in the thought of God and doing the word and the will of God. When we do, we will have what God's word has promised, okay? Transform by the way I think. If I'm going to be changed, 
who said it? Stinking thinking. I got stinking thinking. When I'm depressed, discouraged, and worn out, and, uh, and overrun, is because my thinking's not right, okay? Um, get your thinking right. What, what's right thinking? God's word. I think his thoughts. I speak his words. I go and act upon and will have the results that God promised. Then you will know what God wants his will for your life to be. He said here, and I like the way this New Living Translation says it. He says, then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. If you want to know how wonderful his will is for your life, then become that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed in your thinking. Amen. When you live there, when you act there, when you speak there, when you live there, then you will have the results of what God's word has promised, okay? And and I want to encourage you. Um, you know, Pastor hangs around a lot of y'all, and I thank God for the opportunity to go out to lunch with you and to be with you and, and visit with you. And I know this COVID has uh, caused us to kind of pull away and ostracize ourselves, but I'm begging you, church, uh, those that haven't been in a while, would you come Sunday? We're going to have a great service in the Lord. Um, uh, we're transitioning things here to try to make it uh, more uh, more appealing uh, to uh, the multitudes. We have been blessed with a lot of younger faces, and I'm so thankful that they're here, and I'm so thankful that we're seeing growth on a consistent basis. Uh, we are seeing souls saved, but along with that salvation comes a lot of effort to disciple, to make disciples. And so, you know, I'm reading over this passage of scripture that most of you have memorized throughout the years, but I'm asking you, are you really living what you have memorized? Or is it just something in your thoughts, but it's not being acted upon? What did the Bible say in the in book of um, Hebrews? He said, um, that the promises given to Israel uh, did not help them or profit them in any way because they mixed not faith with it. In other words, they didn't mix their faith with it. To mix your faith with it means simply that you get up and do what you know God has given you to do. And you don't worry about how you're going to get it accomplished. You don't worry about um, all the ins and outs, so you just simply get up by faith and go do what God's called you to do. And along the way, many a times God will provide before, but then along the way, God will provide along the way too. So again, whatever the case be, don't lose sight of that, okay? Um, you know, it's a, it's a good night. It's a good day in, in to be in Christ. And um, in spite of all the, the, the struggles that you see, our world entering into with our economy and with uh, the sickness that seems to be still the pandemic still seems to be uh, trying to plague people. Um, and then there's other issues that are occurring that, uh, you know, uh, the abortion issues and things like that that are occurring that are becoming more real and that we're going to have to make effort to make change. Uh, Please be involved, be in prayer. Faith without works is dead, okay? So let's be a people of works and faith together, blessing and ushering in the kingdom of God in this needy world that we live in, amen? I'm gonna close in prayer. Thank you again for being with me. I, I pray, Lord, that God's anointing be upon you and his blessings be upon you and your family. Father, thank you, Lord, for your work. Lord, I, I ask my brothers and sisters to become that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Let it be through the transformation of the way they think, God. And let their thinking change their speech. Let their thinking change their actions. Let their thinking change the way they live their life, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you now and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God love you. God bless you. Thank you again for being with me. I pray that Sunday morning I'll see you in church. Amen. God bless you. 10 o'clock Sunday morning. 
here bright and early and ready to go. God love you. God bless you. Till then, bye-bye.